Somehow in the South, we got the idea we'd be exempt from the laws of history. If only we closed our minds and kept them closed, no matter how much reality threatened us. And by 1860, when a Yankee journalist came to town, we were all a little crazy on the subject of secession. We were playing with fire all right, in the streets, in the state house, even in the First Baptist Church, where our rage to secede was only briefly dampened by a smallpox epidemic. And when General Sherman showed up in a couple of years with arson on his mind too, all hell broke loose. Columbia will have bitter cause to remember the visit of Sherman's army, a Yankee officer boasted in his diary. Not in this generation or the next, no, not in a century, can this city recover from the deadly blow which has taken its life. After 80 years, we started again from scratch, poking through the ashes to find what we needed to build another city. And we built back all the walls and barriers that had been there before, as if the devastation had taught us nothing. It was the people always the people who made Columbia what it was. Not the railroads or the cotton mills or the university. Not even Fort Jackson with its endless parade of dignitaries and recruits. Or the state house with its inexhaustible supply of pigeons and boiled peanuts. And the people have kept on making it over and over out of bits and pieces of themselves. <laughs> 